Welcome to the Configure Price Quote Podcast. My name is Frank Sohn and I'm the founder of NoCBQ Consulting. This podcast is 100% focused on Configure Price Quote, also known as CPQ, and will provide you useful insights into this topic. Today I'm very excited to announce Chris Schutz, co-founder and CEO of Logic as my guest. Chris lives with his family in Chicago and is well known to anyone who knows CPQ since he was also one of the co-founders of Big Machines, which was sold to Oracle in 2013. Today I invited Chris to tell us more about their first customer success with Keysight Technologies and a lot of other interesting topics. So welcome back to the CPQ podcast, Chris. Hey, thanks, Frank. Chris, before we talk about Logic.io's latest achievements, tell our listeners who may not know you what you did before you co-founded Logic.io. Yeah, well, as, as you touched on a little bit a second ago, Frank, I started Big Machines back in 2000, uh, and then we sold that to Oracle in 2013. And I worked for Oracle for a number of years, but actually prior to founding Logic.io, I was retired for about three quarters of a year. Uh, and actually, my plan was to be, you know, retired kind of permanently. But this opportunity with Logic IO came up, which we'll obviously talk about a little bit more here in a minute. But I was retired, and uh, you know, my favorite hobbies include, you know, working in my wood shop, working uh, in my metal shop, building things, fixing cars, and that was some hobbies that I was very much looking forward to catching up on after I had retired from Oracle. So after this early retirement ended, what do you like or dislike the most about the current startup phase? And I guess you could say startup phase, correct? It's you know, it's hard to define what a startup phase really really means. We've got about 20 customers now. We've got live customers. We've got a fully built out team of about 43 professionals now doing engineering, sales, customer success, customer support, marketing various functions. So I think we're, we're probably exiting the startup phase and we're, we've got good processes in place to ensure customer success and happiness and all the finance systems are in place. We're working on our ISO 27001 certification audits, which are happening now. So I think we're, we're maturing pretty rapidly as a company. And, uh, and, you know, we're excited about where things are headed in the market. We we just had our first really sizable quarter in terms of bookings and revenue. And we'll be issuing a press release with a lot of details on that soon, which is which we're, we're very excited about. Very exciting, especially since the company is not that old just yet, right? So, But one thing I have to ask, since you mentioned earlier that you worked previously for Oracle, now you work closer with uh, Salesforce, what, what are some of the major differences that stand out for you? Well, I, both Oracle and Salesforce are amazing companies in their own right. You know, I Oracle, you look at the technology they have and the things that they can do with their core database product and now their autonomous database product and their ERP cloud platforms. Those are, those products are run by, you know, very talented leadership with amazing engineering teams. And for a lot of companies, those specific products are the only game in town, so to speak. If you need the fastest database, the most scalable systems, Oracle is still an amazing product to do that. What's really incredible about Salesforce is just the scale of the business that they've been able to do, not only in terms of revenue and being as large as they are on a revenue scale and still growing very rapidly. And the other thing that I really like about Salesforce is their culture around taking care of their customers, their employees, their community. And they really believe in this concept of, of just customer happiness at all levels through the journey. And that's something that we always preached at, at Big Machines. We had a phrase we called customer success equals our success. And so we're, we're very maniacal about that here at Logic IO too, where we take care of our customers. And that aligns very well with the Salesforce philosophy of how they, how they grow and, and scale that business. I think the other thing that is, is a lot of fun now, you know, working more closely with Salesforce is they have, as everyone knows, they really own the market for the technology systems that power the front ends of companies from um, CRM to CPQ 
to marketing, uh, to service. And that's a really awesome partner to have because the the systems that we're building with Logic IO play very much into that whole front office work for these companies. And so it's great to have a partner that really dominates that space like Salesforce. Excellent. We talk about more about that in a minute. One question I want to ask you before we talk more about Logic IO is what is one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Yeah, it's it's an interesting question. I think in general, frankly, I'm not a super like surprising person, which is I guess good and bad. But um, you know, one thing that's I guess kind of interesting is every year of high school I spent in a different um, state and city. So we we moved around a lot when I was in uh, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade in high school. And I I bring that up because I think that taught me perseverance, um, a certain amount of toughness, having to reacclimate every year. And I think, it, although it was difficult at the time, because we had to do it, I think it has taught me um, a lot in business and, how, you know, working with people and building relationships and, you know, quickly acclimating to different, you know, different environments. Wow, that's really, truly uh, something special, right? So because I think it prepared you then much earlier than everyone else for, for, for these tough situations. Anyway, thank you very much for sharing that. That that was really interesting. Now, for anyone who's not familiar with Logic, uh, can you very quickly uh, remind us what products and services you offer? Yeah, sure, Frank. So we at Logic IO, we have a product which we call the Commerce Logic Engine. And it's a product configurator that's really designed to help companies um, configure and sell their products more efficiently and sell them faster and do it with a lot less overhead and maintenance. And the reason we call it the Commerce Logic Engine and not a product configurator is that a lot of our customers have taken this product configuration engine and they may use it inside of Salesforce CPQ to enhance the properties of Salesforce CPQ to basically supercharge their configuration process. But then they'll take that same rules engine they've built for Salesforce CPQ, and they'll, then they'll extend it into an e-commerce or commerce cloud platform so they can go direct with the same rules engine, but perhaps give it a different UI and a different behavior on top of it. And we're seeing that that is a big place that the market is going for configured product selling. And even companies that don't have configured products, but they might want to sell direct or sell a solution um, or do guided selling for their products, they find our Commerce Logic Engine very useful to do all of those things. And that's our primary that's our primary product. We also sell um, what we call expert services to go with that. So if a customer wants some help ar architecting how they put rules in the Commerce Logic Engine, we can you know we sell them a service of a couple hours a week, almost like a buddy system that they can tap into to help them uh, create their product configuration models. Excellent. And what can you tell us about industry focus, customer sizes that you want to work with and the locations that you focus on? So we, the locations we work in are primarily North America and EMEA right now. So Europe, um, we're getting some interest in Asia, uh, but primarily the places we're focusing in are North America and Europe right now. We've worked with, you know, working with a variety of companies to, you know, smaller privately owned businesses that have a lot of challenges selling their products for a good fit for us, all the way up to very large companies, you know, like a key site that's nearly 5 billion in revenue, 14,000 employees. And so we've, we're really stretching the gamut. I think we're very fortunate to have the engineering and product teams that we do led by Richard Jones and Fazal Gupta, two very experienced individuals who has been able to, in, in, in the last two years, really build a world-class product that can scale to the very top of the market for the Fortune 500 and even to, and still be a very uh, user-friendly, low-cost solution for smaller, smaller businesses. And, and we don't um, focus specifically on a vertical, but as you would expect, we do a lot of business in manufacturing, high tech, medical device, business services, um, building materials, uh, software companies. So we really, the product, the way we've designed the engine being an actually based configurator, it makes it very easy to go from 
a manufacturing use case where you're maybe generating very complex engineering sizing and bills of material to, let's say, a services business where you're creating a multi-year proposal with um, a subscription and a bunch of service hours that have to be calculated in various different ways with a complex financial model. So we really put a lot of thought into the way the product goes together so that we can work both sides of that equation and do it in a very efficient, um, you know, low TCO model for our customers. Mm. And I think you had almost a perfect segue here for me when you mentioned Keysight Technologies, right? So you had an announcement about that as one of your first customers who went live with, right? So tell us a little bit more about that. For example, what products and services do they sell? So what kind of complexity do they need? And why did they decide to use Logic? Yeah, we're really excited about Keysight. Keysight is, is a great company in the fact that They're very, very large. They do things at scale, uh, but they're also a very, very innovative, very easy company to work with and very approachable. And they have a very talented, you know, intellectual team in, in all aspects of the business from their, their sales teams to their IT teams to their product engineering teams, as you'd expect. But what they do is they make very sophisticated uh, network diagnostic equipment and oscilloscopes, and they sell into a lot of different businesses so they'll sell to other um, network device companies so that they can analyze their equipment. They'll sell to comms companies so they can analyze their 5G networks. And they have a very significant defense business where they'll uh, sell their equipment um, into the military so they can analyze um, complex like CAN bus architectures inside of military equipment or military networks. And their products... Uh, one way to think about it is there are oscilloscopes, but there are oscilloscopes that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars with incredible capabilities to monitor these networks and, and signal processing capabilities of these networks. And this equipment uh, not only has a, a oftentimes a pretty significant initial capital cost to acquire it, But they also have a very significant services business where they'll go in and service the equipment and then calibrate it because the measurements are very sensitive that their oscilloscopes can do. And so they have to be calibrated frequently. And they have a, a very large services business unit inside a key site that, that does that. They also have an interesting software business that they're adding to and acquiring. And then they're also acquiring other you know network diagnostic businesses. So they're pretty active in the um, acquisition acquisition front. They use uh, a variety. So prior to Logic IO, they used a couple of Oracle products. They use the EBS configurator and Oracle CPQ, and it's a pretty complex configuration model. Their most complex systems that they would configure in Logic IO could have thousands of options on them. Um, you know, thousands of rules uh, to configure. Um, inside of um, Logic IO, we've done a lot of work in our admin to eliminate a lot of the custom development and custom scripting that they had to do with Oracle CPQ. There's a couple of products where when we moved them from Oracle into Logic, we're able to reduce the amount of scripting by several thousand lines. And some of those products went in with no advanced functions having to be created in Logic IO. So we really spent a lot of time in our admin to productize a lot of the common capabilities that these companies might need to do. And Keysight's a, a good example of that. And they're using Logic IO with their CPQ tools, and they're also using it on their corporate website. So you can go to keysight.com, you can select a product, um, you can select custom quote, And that'll launch Logic IO inside their website, and you can select options and then submit that into their sales team as a, you know, highly qualified, highly configured lead. So their key sites interesting in the fact that they're really pushing this multi-channel approach of using configuration throughout their throughout their business. And and how many people actually use the solution right now? Not the the exact number, right? As more or less just to see is that in the first phase, in a phase one, you have only 10 users who use it, but in the end stage, you would expect a hundred to use it, or did they go in all in from from phase one? They went all in from phase one, so they have a couple thousand users active in the system now. Excellent. And what improvements have they seen so far? 
Well, the, one of the biggest reasons for doing this is because of the, the complexity of their configurations, the performance and response time of the system has always been a challenge for them. And we were able to implement these products and do you know, sub 100 millisecond response time for page updates. So their users really like that because there's no you know, spinning dialogue boxes to wait for. There's no save buttons. There's no update buttons. All of those things go away. And it's a truly interactive experience where users can pick options, see if the options, how they fit together, see the pricing real time. And it's making the not only the configuration experience and sales process much faster, but it's also a much uh, it's a much more pleasant experience. And that in itself is helping them drive some interesting revenue. They've only been live for about five months now, but um, you know, as we get more data, we suspect that that'll have a positive, a pretty positive impact on sales, especially for that digital lead gen piece hooked up to their corporate website. The other big piece that they've seen a benefit is just with maintenance of the tool. So they actually automated a lot of the migration processes to go from the old tools into Logic IO. Uh, they create some. They created some scripts on Salesforce that actually use our admin APIs to move the data into Logic IO. And long term, we expect that their um, admin and maintenance liabilities are probably going to cut be cut by more than fifty percent, which is a, a significant cost savings for an organization of that size. Novo CPQ Consulting helps you with all CPQ related questions. For example, we help customers to find the best CPQ solution for their business and we help customers analyze their current business process to determine if and where CPQ can help. Here it's important to point out that we are 100% independent and always look out for our customers first. This means for us also that we don't get paid by any CPQ vendor for providing them new customers or for any other services. We are focused on our customers and always provide the best available information to them. We also help system integrators to improve their services and we offer the only CPQ industry subscription that provides monthly CPQ news and trends. We have many other services. So check it out today at NovoCPQ.com. Send me an email to frank.zone at NovoCPQ.com to learn how we can help you with your CPQ questions and keep us in mind when you look for 100% impartial CPQ advice. And following up on this topic about Oracle, today there was a press release that you offer now an Oracle migration program to Logic.io. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, we have a place on our website. If you go to our website, you can find a button to learn more about the program. We found over the last several months that Oracle customers are reaching out to us and asking us how we can help them because they have a lot of the challenges of performance and maintainability. And they're seeing that, you know, our, our innovation is happening very quickly and they want to be a part of that innovation process. And so we've been getting, we've been having a lot of customers come to us and say, how would this work? How would we migrate? What benefits can we get? And so we put together a special uh, data package for them that explains the migration process, uh, the benefits they can expect, how long it'll take, And uh, as long, you know, if those customers are looking for alternatives, we would, you know, certainly be ready to to help them. Very interesting. We will definitely have that link in the show notes. Now, when you look back in general over the business last year, how how has that involved uh, evolved, right? So, because I think, and what do you expect for the remainder of the year, especially with all the economic challenges right now? Yeah. So we're we're seeing the market is really developing for us. So our pipeline, you know, we just had a pipeline review meeting this morning. It's run by our head of revenue, Vanessa Rosengarten. Uh, she's been selling CPQ for a very long time in various forms. And she's continuing to uh, develop the market for us. And our pipeline is growing rapidly. At the margin, we are seeing the smaller deals are slowing down and the, you know, the dates are pushing out, but the bigger companies are still focused on taking costs out of their business. And those deals are still um, moving along pretty well. And the, and the smaller deals are still fine too, because there's so many of them in the pipeline right now for us that it's just managing, you know, time and effort and balancing, you know, rep workload um, for those. 
So I would say overall, we have not seen a huge, a huge slowdown in, in the market or even, even a marginal kind of slowdown in the market, except for a couple of deals. Um, I think for us, you know, Q4, which ends for us at the end of January is always a really big month for Salesforce. So we, by proxy, we expect that to be a pretty active time for us. And it looks like that is, is probably going to be the case. I think companies, you know, what's interesting is if I look back at the time at Big Machines that we had, you know, we had some really tough years or we struggled early on. But I would say that in 2008 was, I think, one of our best year over year sales growth years on a percentage basis. And, you know, as you know, that was a big time for a recession in the United States and the market, the market crash. But I think what was interesting about big machines is we were a big cost reduction um, alternative for a lot of companies that had selling challenges in big rep organizations that needed to improve their sales process. And so I think that was one of the reasons why in that downturn, we grew, we grew so much at big machines. And I do think with Logic IO, We'll, we are starting to see the same impact where companies have invested in their IT processes and, and programs, but they really haven't gotten the ROI because they have this missing piece, which is the commerce logic engine. And so I'm still very bullish on the market. And I think that these, uh, these next couple of months for Logic Audio will also be you know, very high growth months for us. Excellent. Always happy to hear that, right? And it's, by the way, also what I see in the market as well, that the large majority of CPQ vendors are still very bullish on the market because of exactly the reasons you just mentioned, right? One uh, follow-up question I want to ask here is, are you still hiring then? Because it sounded like you still expect quite a bit of growth, so you're still hiring, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. And the key areas we're hiring is uh, engineering. So, you know, Richard has a, an awesome engineering team that he's built under his leadership. And we, you know, we're still looking for talented, experienced engineers and also more junior engineers we would like. Also, we, we have an opening for a DevOps role. Uh, we have two sales engineering openings. And then also in our um, sales team, we're looking for a, a couple of more uh, sales team members to help us out. And I guess that's interesting for anyone who's looking for new opportunities in this field, right? So have a look at that. It's definitely a very interesting company to keep track of. Now, one thing I want to ask you, Chris, also is recently there was Streamforce, right? It used to be much bigger than it was right now. I still heard lots of positive things, even though Dreamforce was smaller this year, right? It was more intimate, allowed a little bit more. Uh, intimate is maybe not the right term here, right? So it was 45,000 people or something like that, but it was smaller than it used to be. was just wondering, how was Dreamforce for your team this, this year? Dreamforce is great. I've probably been to eight Dreamforces, I think, um, in my career. This one was by far the best. I, I heard that it was smaller. It certainly did not feel that much smaller to me. Uh, the, I think the last Dreamforce I went to was 125,000 prior to this one. And although this one, I heard numbers 30 to 40,000, it certainly felt a lot bigger than that if I compare it to the ones that was over 100,000. It was very well executed. I loved the way that they did like the, the show floor, the partner pavilion. Um, the concert was awesome. We had about 35 meetings. So we were really busy, which so it was a very productive dream force. We sponsored a couple of events. We got a lot of interesting companies we had not talked to yet. And so for us, I think the payback was really, really good on dream force. And I'm really glad that we did it. Obviously it's not an inexpensive thing to do, but It allowed us to talk to a lot of companies we had not met that were struggling with their sailing pro sales processes. And so it was a really good event for us. And, and I, of all the dream forces I've been to, this one I actually personally enjoyed probably more than any of them. And it was a lot of fun to catch up with folks that I hadn't seen for a couple of years and then also help them to, to grow their use of Salesforce in their business. Excellent. I think that may be a hint for anyone looking next year if they should or should not attend, uh, attend Dreamforce, right? So maybe worth doing that again after the pandemic. Um, another question that I think is interesting is that a lot of system integrators are very interested to work with you and your team, right? So, and I was just wondering, uh, how, how is that working at this time? And are you still looking to sign up more system integrators to partner and do the implementations for you? 
Yeah, we, we are. We, we probably have about 30 system integrators now that are signed up in our partner program. And we have a couple different levels in the program that you can work your way through. We're always looking for more partners because the partners are, can, you know, have a lot of specific talents depending on, you know, what type of companies they work with and what part of the world that they work in. So we're always interested in, in talking to those, to those folks. Of those you know, 30 partners, there's about a dozen of them, I would say, that are very active, you know, meaning they have multiple logos that we're working, working on together with them and either implementing or in a late pursuit of a sales process with them. So I think the, the partner interest has been really strong, which is really exciting and fun. And it helps us, it helps us, you know, learn more about the market, which we really like. And then, and we don't have a services team. So we, we rely completely on our partners to, to help us drive success with our, our customers through the process. We have a training program for the partners that you can uh, sign up to be a partner. It's a pretty simple process. And then you just enroll in one of the training classes and a two-day class will give you uh, probably about 90% of what you need to, to fully implement Logic IO in, in a pretty complex environment. Um, so it's an, easy, it's an easy process. If you're considering being a partner, I would say check it out, learn the product and see if it's, uh, if it's a good fit for your organization. And also for, especially for these partner things, uh, what should they expect to invest in this? So, so you have certifications or something, or is the two day training effort, that's it uh, mostly? We, we do have a couple of levels of certification. And with that first two day class, you do get a, an initial certification, which I think partners have kind of had fun with. We've had a lot of people kind of posting them on LinkedIn, which has been exciting, exciting and fun to see. The, the investment's pretty pretty minimal. And certainly if you have resources that are used to you, to implementing Salesforce CPQ, I would say the lift, the lift is pretty easy. Um, and if you have people that have worked with other configurators that are particularly if they're attribute based instead of part based, that's also an advantage. I think the the act, if you're already doing sales process improvement projects or CPQ projects in your firm, I think actually adding Logic IO to your to your toolbox is a pretty it's a pretty low low investment uh, process to do that. Excellent. And as I said, so I see tons of partners who are very interested in this. I would say even the strongest interest from any CPQ vendor, right? So anyway, I think they know where they have to go if they want to learn more about this. Let's talk about one more topic. And there are so many today. I'm pretty sure we will not get through all of them. But this one I definitely wanted to talk about was you recently announced a study called State of B2B E-commerce for Manufacturers, right? So, so which you had commissioned by a third-party firm. Tell us more about that, right? So, for example, who prepared it What and what was evaluated? Yeah, so this was the brainchild of uh, a guy named Blake Krubs, who runs our marketing team. And we're, we're super lucky to have Blake. He's been doing some really cool, very innovative things in marketing, which I love. And this, this uh, commerce study was a good example of that. So what Blake did is he contracted a third-party firm called Sinclair Metrics. And they specialize in looking at um, a series of companies across uh, several different verticals. Manufacturing was a big one that they looked at. And they basically analyzed how difficult or how easy is it to do business with that company. So they would go on their website, try to learn about their products, see if they had a product selector, see if they had a product configurator or a pricer, see how hard it was to browse through their catalog of, of items, uh, see how long it took for the company to get back to them with a specific technical request about a product. And the results of the study were really interesting. So we, we suspected some of the things that we saw, but some of the metrics around, um, you know, I think it was one in 10 companies actually had a product offering that was easy to browse, do guided selling and configuration and be able to find the exact product that you need. And what's interesting in the CPQ market is that um, a lot of these products that are sold today with a direct sales person involved tomorrow will be a self-service driven product. And today, those, those folks that are interested in those products, the first thing they do is they go to the manufacturer's website. They try to learn about them. And the more they can learn, the more likely they are to engage downstream in the sales process. 
And so the fact that these companies have so little product definition available to their customers that's easy to digest and understand is actually slowing down their sales process. And right now, I think it's it's almost a peripheral concern that they may or may not be thinking about. But I do think a year from now, that'll be a must have. And that's where the commerce logic engine comes in, where you need to be able to not only have a very easy to use, easy to maintain configurator for Salesforce CPQ, but you also need to be able to project that out on your corporate website and make it easy for your customers to comprehend and understand your offering very early on in the the sales process. And that study proved that there's a lot of other really interesting statistics in that study. I encourage folks to go to our website and download it and check it out. It's a really cool, uh, it's a really cool offering and it's become primary research for a lot of other research firms have, have been utilized, utilizing that study. And they're going to see, you'll see additional um, studies published soon based on that. And they'll be, they'll be quoting logic IO in that. Chris, as always, very interesting talking to you, but unfortunately, we're coming to the end of this episode. Hence, my last question is, what's a good way for interested listeners to get a hold of you or your team? Yeah, and thanks for thanks for your time today, Frank. The, uh, the best thing is our website, but anyone can always email me at any time, and it's just chris at logic.io, so L-O-G-I-K dot I-O. Feel free to email, you, email me if you can't find something or if you have any additional questions about our uh, products and services. And we will have all this information in the show notes. Chris, thank you very much for making time for the CPQ podcast today. Thank you, Frank. Great talking to you again. I'd like to thank everyone for listening and hope you learned something interesting today. If you like the podcast, please go ahead and rate it on iTunes or share it with your friends and colleagues. In the meantime, you can find us online at www.novocpq.com. So long, everyone.